Hello everybody, Minus here, and we are continuing our quest to get more information out there about the class changes that happened on the website reveal for Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. In this video, we're going to look at the Holy Avenger, looking to carry out their judgment across Terminus, the Paladin. So let's start with the top of the page, and Paladin is now listed as solely Tank, which is continuing the theme we're seeing to clarify the class roles, instead of previously listing it as tank or utility. Armor is now listed as heavy plate and shields, and it's worth noting that we believe all the class pages simply list the highest tier of gear that they can wear, allowing them to wear all the armor types that would fall below the listed selection in armor class. The weapons listed previously for Paladin were one and two-handed edged or blunt weapons, their weapon set now lists a more specific set of weapons. These are sword, greatsword, club, warhammer, great hammer, mace, great mace, edged, great blade, axe, great axe, and polearm, giving the paladins quite an array of weapons. Paladins now list endurance along with the pre-announced wrath and reckoning point systems for their combat resources. It's worth noting that we believe endurance seems to play off of climbing and other types of fatigue style activities in Terminus. The race for Paladins remain the same, with being the only class with two available races only in Dwarf and Human. So let's jump into the new ability listings and talk about what's changed or is new. So first, Glory and Honor has changed slightly from its previous state. It now grants your ally a percentage of your total armor class alongside healing them for the damage the Paladin deals. Arcing Light has a very slight change in which previously it had healed more each time it jumped and this is no longer listed on the description of the ability. This is something that I think could be added to the ability via the mastery system, but again that's just a guess. Edict of Celestial Fury has changed slightly. As it did previously, it stunned the enemy for a short period of time, however it now says it puts them into a disoriented state. This is one of the first known state creating abilities, at least on an enemy, for the paladin. Now these are the only three abilities that seem to be new or changed, which is slightly different from what we've seen so far in covering our class changes. Now it's worth noting that descriptions for generating costing wrath or reckoning points has been removed from the descriptions. Now this could mean absolutely nothing, but it is worth noting in case somehow the system has changed how these resources work. Now the following abilities we cover are no longer listed on the website, so please note that this doesn't mean they're gone entirely. Some of these abilities may be added during future reveals, some may have changed, or perhaps they were completely removed. For the sake of this video we'll be discussing the fact that they're missing from the site and just some small thoughts. First is Sense Undeath. The Paladin will glow when undeath is nearby. This was a passive ability. It was kind of a cool class fantasy, so I really hope this makes a return. Venger's Vow, which basically stated you couldn't be stunned by undead enemies as a passive ability, is also missing. Next is Knight's Persuasion. Now this ability allowed you to convince a humanoid enemy to lay down their weapons for peace and remove them from combat. It actually even made them friendly to you. This is an interesting CC mechanic, so again this is one I'd like to see back because it's very different. Fiery Aegis is a wall of celestial flame that purges you of poison and disease while knocking around enemies or knocking them down around you. Brilliant Aegis was an AoE that blinded enemies and act even as a bright light source even in supernatural darkness. Lightful Avenger was a passive ability that enhances the paladin's combat prowess against undead. Now this was a self-imposed state, and in this state all damage would be reduced from the undead, and reduced damage was actually spread as health increases to the rest of your party. Again, a pretty neat ability. One of the types of spells that were listed for a paladin on the old site were hymns. Now there were three types, devotion, which gave healing abilities a heal over time effect, stronghold, which gave the group an AC buff, or Justice, which gave 50% of Wrath spent, which would be refunded on your crits. And then there was another type of, you know, status or ability set called Evansong. Now there were a few different ones here and none of these are listed currently. Glory and Honor was healing being applied to yourself as well. Miraculous Shimmer would heal the group. 
Atone would give more HP and mana restored when resurrecting allies. Arcing Light would jump to all group members before fading. Or you could have Living Light, which damages all enemies nearby. So both these hymns and songs seem to be at least for the moment on the side, or will possibly be revealed in the future. Now moving on from spells, or let's say utility or, you know, I don't know, support style spells, we actually didn't get to see many melee abilities for the Paladin. I was kind of shocked because a Paladin's a tank, right? And we're seeing all the healing spells transferred over onto the site. I do believe this is a little confusing because it could lead a new follower to really wonder why this class is a tank, as in my opinion the class on the website reads a bit more like some sort of beefed up healer. That said, here are the combat style abilities that were left off of the site so far. Lance of the Lightful was a bolt of light that could stun enemies that were fleeing. Fervent Strike was a strong melee attack, which does more damage and hate generation when it's performed on a stunned enemy. Pummel and Cross would strike your enemy and then perform a sweeping attack, damaging all enemies nearby in a frontal cone. Now the original strike also had a chance to stun the enemy. Light Guard would imbue your shield and increase your block or parry depending on your weapon type. If you blocked or parried during this, you'd actually stun your enemies. Miraculous Shimmer would basically dive to the assistance of a low HP group member leaving an image behind to distract your current target. Also a pretty neat ability, we hope we see this one back. Glorified Self would kind of tie to that ability, it would send an image of yourself into battle to hold enemies' attention, like a temporary CC or a fake tank so to speak. Hollowed Assault would evolve your Chastening Strike into Hollowed Assault, allowing them to strip the marks of high mortals from enemies, as it says, which is a confusingly worded ability that seems to debuff something unique. But at the same time, I think that this could easily be removed as a new ability and just placed as a mastery style upgrade. Now Chastening Blow is the last of the melee attacks, and this one would imbue your weapon with light that could strip profane and curse enhancements from the enemy. So as you can see, it appears a lot has been left off for the Paladin. As noted before, it doesn't mean that they're all gone, but I think it's fair that there could be some significant changes to coming how the abilities were laid out. Keep in mind the website abilities in the past were made before two very important key decisions were made. Those were the decision to remove ranked versions of spells or downranking, and also the inclusion of the mastery system. It will be interesting to see how much this class actually changes when the full set of abilities are revealed. Maybe we're making a big deal out of nothing, but I think we might be seeing some changes because there just isn't any attack or tank-like abilities outside of like hate generation or defense stuff. It's kind of interesting to me. So for those of you looking to play the Master of Holy Retribution, what do you think of these so far? Am I off my rocker going this detailed or do you think it's all going to just work itself out? Are you still excited to play Paladin? Check back with us over the next week or so as we continue to cover more class changes and overall Pantheon Rise of the Fallen changes in our dig through the brand new website. Until next time.